Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve an exponential equation using the one-to-one -one property. Now, what's special about the one-to-one -one property is the majority of times we don't have to use the calculator. All of these problems I'm going to solve, uh, all these exponential equations I'm going to solve, we're not, I'm not going to use a calculator. Now, it, we do have to have certain equations because the next video that I'm going to make is solving them, um, solving them with using a calculator. So you can't use the one-to-one -one property for every single problem, but for all of these we can. And again, to kind of remind you of the one-to-one -one property, is basically just saying if you had a to the x equals um, a to the y, then x equals y. Now, that's your kind of formal definition. And the way I just kind of think about it, oh, there's my calculator, is think about it in real numbers. If I had 3 squared is equal to 3 to the x, then what does x have to equal, right? If those both sides are equal to each other, and we know one, x, one power is 2, the other power is x, what does the other x, what does x have to be? Well, it's obvious 2 has to equal x, or x has to equal 2, right? So that's basically the one-to-one -one property. And a lot of times, sometimes we'll just, you know, so they cancel out and base and, and you know delete them. But what it means is when you have the bases are exactly the same, then their powers are equal to each other. So <clears throat> what happens with this is I didn't do any basic ones, which I guess I probably could have. But you look at 4 to the x equals 16. Well, in this case, we don't have bases that are exactly the same. So therefore, what I'm going to need to do in this case is I'm going to need to rewrite this expression with the bases being exactly the same. And the reason why the one-to-one -one property works for all of these is because we can rewrite these all with having the same base. So you got to look at 16 and say, can I rewrite 16 as 4 raised to a power? Well, this one should be fairly obvious. Um, we have 4 to the x. And I could write 4 squared as equal to 16, right? So if I have 4 to the x equals 4 squared, well, now I can just say that x is equal to 2. Okay. And there we go, done. Now in this next example, we know that 4 squared is equal to 16. But we have a problem. The 16 is in the denominator. So here I have a, an exponent here and have a fraction. So one of the things that we need to do is re learn to rewrite um, fractions with negative powers. And that comes into one of our uh, rules from negative exponents. Okay, I'll write the one-to-one -one property here as well. Okay, so I can rewrite 16 with a negative power. 4 to the x equals 16 to the negative first power. And again, that comes from um, our negative, our uh, rules of exponents with a negative, using uh, negative exponents. Now, I know that 16 I can rewrite as 4 squared. Now, just make sure that you're using your parentheses correctly. Okay, now I'm going to want to use the power rule, which remember the power rule is when you have an exponent raised to another power, you multiply the powers. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 1, so 4 to the x equals 4 times negative 2. Now I can say that x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so there's a difference. Well, x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. Okay, so now we have an exponent that's under, uh, now we have a fraction that's being raised to the x. Well, again, the same thing. We're going to want to use our negative exponent rule. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the negative first power times x equals 32. I multiply these, 2 to the negative x. Oh, um, now, again, I want to think about 32. Now, a lot of times people sometimes, you know, kind of get confused. So if you're, you know that the, you, um, what we want to do is we know we can't rewrite uh, 2 as a base 30, as a base 32. So we want to rewrite 32 as a base 2. So you always want to kind of go back to your smaller base and so try to see, can I take that smaller base and raise it to a power to get to my other base? So a lot of times what I just tell students to do is just to the side, just start writing down what each of them equal. Okay, 2 to the first power is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the fourth power is 16, 2 to the fifth power is 32. So therefore, I know 32 is equivalent to 2 to the fifth power. Now I have my 1 to 1 property. So I can say negative x is equal to 5. Just divide by negative 1 on both sides. x equals a negative 5. Okay. Um, in the next example, you can see now we have a fraction on both sides. And again, but we want to kind of look at, you know, fractions a lot of times students just freeze up. They see a fraction and they freeze up. But again, we can break down the fraction into the numerator and the denominator and see how the numerator and the denominator are related on both sides. 
From my numerators, you can see just 2 to 4 is being squared. From 3 to 9 is just being squared, right? So all I can do is I can rewrite this as 2 thirds to the x equals 2 thirds squared. Because remember, when you're squaring a fraction, you square the numerator and you square the denominator. Or whenever you have a fraction raised to a power, you, that power distributes to the numerator as well as the denominator. So therefore, now they have the same base, and I can say x is equal to 2. And that rule is, looks like this, um, a over b to the m equals a to the m over b to the m. OK, um, so those are kind of like the simple ones. You know, I'm just kind of looking at it. Usually what you're going to do is find the lower base and then rewrite to the other base. But now what we're going to do is going to get into some problems that are going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, these problems where the base is not so much apparent. Because in this case, you know, I saw my lower number was 4, and I said, that's my base. Can I rewrite 16 as a base 4? Yeah, we could. Well, here, my lower base is 9, right? Can I rewrite 27 raised to the ninth power? And I think, crap, no, I can't. I, 9 squared is, is 81, so I'm kind of stuck there. So now what I need to do is think about a lower base that, that I can raise to give me 9, as well as a lower base that can give me 27. Well, automatically, when I see 9, I think of 3 squared. So then I say, all right, well, if I know 3 squared, 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. Hopefully, you know what 3 cubed is. But if you don't, you'll figure out that it's going to be 27. So therefore, I actually can rewrite both of these with the same base 3, whereas this one is going to be 3 squared x, and this one is 3 cubed. Actually, I don't need any of my parentheses. OK, now I apply my power rule. So I get 3 to the 2x equals 3 cubed. Therefore, I have 2x is equal to 3. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 3 halves. OK, um, in this next case, now we just have an exponent that's not just, you know, before I've been using just x, and it's been pretty simple, right? But now we can also have expressions as our exponents. But it's not really going to matter as much. Again, um, in this case, I see 2 and I see 8. I know that 2. I can raise 2 to the third power, and that's going to give me 8. So I just have um, 2 raised to the 2x minus 1 equals 2 cubed. Now, again, whenever your bases are exactly the same, the powers are just equal to each other. So now I have a two-step equation that I can just solve based on my understanding of uh, solving equations. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of answers that are 2, aren't I? OK, well, there you go. Now, sometimes, um, now in this case, again, we look at 125 and 5. And automatically, when I see 25, I think, oh, OK, well, again, looking for the change of base. You know, not all of these, not every problem that you do solving equations is going to be using the change of base. But anytime you see a square number, think to use the change, of, uh, think to use the one to one property first. I see 25, I think 5 squared, that's a square number. Now, is 125, can I also take 5 and raise it to a power and give me 125? Yes, it's going to be 3. Um, so therefore, I'll rewrite this as 5 cubed times 2x plus 1 equals 5 squared. Now, to multiply these, I have to make sure that I apply the distributive property. Because remember, using the power rule, you're applying the distributive property. OK? Bases are the same. So when I apply the distributive property, I'm going to distribute. So therefore, I'll have 6x plus 3 equals 2. Minus 3, minus 3, 6x equals da, 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 negative 1, divide by 6, divide by 6, x equals a negative 1 sixth. That doesn't look good. OK. And then last but not least, we could also have um, our powers be, exp uh, powers be expressions on both sides. Um, again, I look at 8 and 16, and I think of 16 as seeing 4 squared, right? But the problem is, I can't write 4 raised to a power to give me 8. Because if you think about it, you have 4 to the first power, which is 4. 4 squared is equal to 16. So we're kind of stuck. We know 16 is 4 squared, but we don't know, but we can't write 8 as 4 to a power. So we have to look at a smaller number. Um, and then, fortunately, I used a lot of these to be simple, it would be 2. Notice how 2 raised to a power gives us 16 as well as 8. So that's what I'm going to want to use. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the main important thing is I would recommend knowing uh, 
you know, two, three, at least to the couple, to the first couple powers, because when you're using the one-to-one -one property, most of the problems in a book or you see on test, they're all this, I mean, you're using very similar numbers. Even when it's a fraction, the numbers in the top and bottom are gonna be square numbers raised to a power. So therefore, two to the eighth is two cubed times x plus three equals two to the fourth power times, oops, two to the fourth power times x minus one. Okay, now I need to apply the distributive property. So that's two to the three times x plus one equals two to the four times x minus one. Now I can get rid of my bases and I'm left with three x plus three equals four x minus four. Now I just need to simply solve for x. So I'm gonna get the x's on the same side. I get seven equals x, or x equals seven. Okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve an exponential equation using the one-to-one -one property. Thanks.